Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. We start with the new series about the current sources using the BGT and MOSFET. So this will be our example number one where we discuss the current mirror in a very simple format. Of course we will work out the calculations and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have here the simple current mirror using the two BGTs. You can see the Q1 and Q2. And we have a resistor just to create here the current and also the voltage source VCC. Q1 and Q2 are exact same, they are matched and we designate it like Q1 is equal to Q2 and that means we have the same beta, the current gain, the early voltage are exact same, also the emitter areas are exact same, so we have the same dimensions for our transistors. Now for this circuit we know that the VCC is 15 volts and also the VBE which is the VBE1 and VBDE2 are exactly 0.7, in this case they are exact same. Now, when you look at this circuit, and uh, you would like to calculate here the or design the current IC2, which is the load current here, that is approximately equal to IRF when you make the beta large or have the beta large for your transistor. We will see what kind of effect it has later in our discussion. So this is actually a current source from this, let's say, two transistors and one resistor and one DC source. Okay, let's see how we can design now for the load current of 5 milliamps for this circuit using this information. So the solutions and we start with our calculations first. And as said before in our circuits and analog electronics uh, the videos, we always start by designating the nodes. We have two nodes here, X and Y. What we see is what we have is the IRF, which is our reference current, will split in IC1. And a current here in this branch will, will split again at node Y in IB1 and IB2. Those are the base currents of the Q1 and Q2. So we can write at node X the Kirchhoff current law actually directly for these currents like IRF is equal to IC1 plus this. But this is again the summation of IB1 and IB2. That's actually shown here. And we know that IC1 and IB1, this two together is the emitter current. That's always the case for the, uh, the BGTs because these two will sum up to the emitter current. So the collector current plus the base current is always the emitter current, no matter in what operating region the transistor is. We also know the following. We see since the VBE1, which is the base emitter voltage of the Q1, is equal to the base emitter voltage of the Q2, that means the collector current of the Q1 and the collector current of the Q2 are exact same. That is because of that exponential relationship between the current of the collector and also the base emitter voltage. That is a dependency and that will mean that the Q1 and Q2, since they are matched, they have the exact same area and all the parameters, they will, exact same, they will have exact same collector current, they also have the exact same, the base current and also the emitter current. So that means we can also write it like this. So instead of IE1 here, we can also say it is IE2. So we can then change this expression like so. But we know also that the emitter current itself is always beta plus one times the base current. That is because of the collector current here times the, uh, the beta times the base current plus the base current will give you this expression. Now, when you use this in here, we have now an expression of the IRF in terms of the beta and the IB2 only. Now, when you now combine this together, you have now this expression, which you have beta plus 2 times the IB2. Now, for the collector current 2, which is IC2, we can also write down the beta times the IB2. Or you write it like so, the IB2 is equal to IC2 over beta. Now, when you substitute now this expression in here, you get this expression. Now, you see directly that the IRF is related to the IC2, which is our load current, just through this beta, which is shown here. But if you want the this design or calculate the load current instead of the IRF, you can also have it like this. So you just flip this fraction, you have now beta over beta plus two. What you see is already here, as said before, that the IC2 is approximately equal to IRF because the beta is, in most cases, large. If this is, for example, just five or six, in, let's say in power uh, transistors, okay, then we have a very small difference, uh, or, I mean, large difference. But if this is 100, like so, or maybe 500, then this difference is very small. So we can say IC2 
is approximately IRF, but it is not exactly equal to each other. We will see that later in our simulations. Now moving on and calculating now the required IRF because we know that the beta is 100 and we have a 2 here and also again 100 and we require 5 milliamps for our IC2 which is our load current and when you do the calculations here you get 5.1 milliamps. Now for the next step is we need to calculate the R for this reference current because we have the VCC and we can now calculate all the way from this node all the way to ground using Kirchhoff current law, I mean the voltage law, the R. Now the R is here so it's vcc is equal to r times irf plus the vbe1 which is this voltage node so for this voltage plus this no node voltage actually from here because this is just a short all the way here is this now we can now rewrite this such that we have an expression for r and that's actually shown here now vcc is known vbe1 is known and we just calculated the irf and we now substitute the values here, 50 minus 0 0.7 over the 0 .0, 0 0.0051, you get 2,804 ohms. Now we will check this, of course, uh, check this in the R simulations and verify that this is indeed correct or not. And maybe we do some fine tuning in our circuit. Now, looking at the simulation result, this is actually the point where we verify our findings, our calculations. Now, this is the circuit, as we have this determined, the R, and also the, what we have anticipated as the reference current of 5.1 milliamps. What you see is, it is this is the reference current, this is a little bit larger, and also the IC2 is a little bit larger, not that much different, but still there is some difference, almost uh, actually in this case uh, 5 microamps, but there is some difference. So what we can do here, we can also see the following, that the base currents are exact same, because the base emitter voltage are exact same, and also the IC1 and IC2 are exact same. So that is also verified as our assumption before. But the IRF is definitely not equal to the IC2, and there is some error. So how can we now make this exactly 5 milliamps? By the way, the 5 microamp is a very small error, so you can just forget about this and then just say, okay, the design is complete, so let's move on and for the actual physical realization. But in order to, let's say, get that exactly 5 milliamps for our IC2, what can you do? Now, you see here that this current is a little bit larger. That means this resistor is probably a little bit smaller than what should be. So we can go up a little bit, up, so increase this, and get this smaller, so also get here the smaller value and closer to 5 milliamps. So that's just hair larger, not 100 or 200 ohms up, maybe 5 or 6, maybe 2 or 3 ohms up. So I will do that, I will tune the R, I have changed that and tried it out and I saw that by increasing the resistor R from 2804 to 2807, just 3 ohms, I get this result. You can see 5.1 milliamps for the IRF as calculated and also 5 milliamps as required for our load and you see exact same also for the IC2 and also the base currents are very close to 50 microamps because they divide by 100. So this is now design, this design is now completed using the resistor here just fine-tuned and we have our required load current. So that is what we wanted but Let's now look at the situation in a little bit more detail and see what happens when I disconnect this VCC and just connect it here and make this a changing voltage node for this Q2. So what I mean by that is the following. This is the circuit I will use to determine what happens with this IC2 when I change this node voltage, which is the voltage at the collector node of Q2. So that's actually load voltage versus load current. So let's see what happens. So the rest of the parameters are exact same. So the tuned value for R. And you see here, if I now change load voltage from 1 volts to 17 volts, I see here the load current here in the vertical axis and the horizontal axis are load voltage. The blue line is our current as a function of the load voltage. You see it is not changing at all. So maybe you need to zoom in here a lot and you can maybe see a small difference but it is maybe it is very small and it is the, I mean the change is very small but it's 4.9999 milliamps and a little bit larger than that so very close to 5 milliamps because this scale here is in very small steps so you can say 
the change is almost nothing here and that is a very nice result because in the actual amplifying design we design using or bias using the currents in order to get a stable amplif amplification because the amplifier or the amplifier gain is related to our gm and which is again related to the collector current dc collector current and now if that is constant then we have a very nice dc i mean the uh, amplifier which is a, uh, close to constant value which is what we wanted so this is now actually what we see of course there are other parameters like the temperature changes or other mechanical stress changes that is not what we have discussed here we just discussed only one thing we change the load voltage which is actually this node voltage here from one volt all the way to 17 which is a very large difference and we don't see any change at all which is a nice result for our amplification now when you make the so sweep also but then looking at the load voltage and the load current but then changing the current gain beta of our transistor in this case we change the beta of the q2 again the same circuit and see what happens now you see four plots again the load voltage here on the horizontal axis and also four plots the vertical axis is load current ic2 the blue one is the beta is 50, so a little bit smaller, actually two times smaller than what we have calculated. You see the vertical axis here is almost 4.951462 milliamps, but you can see it is increasing actually with increasing load voltage. But it is that increase is very small because you see here three um, thick points and they are exact the same. So the only change here is probably even even more even smaller than this one so we can just assume for pr all practical purposes that this is just a constant now when you go up by the beta which is this red line it shows again an increase but is actually a very close to a constant value which is just 4.9999 milliamps which is very close to 5 milliamps so it is increasing so if i go up again the pink which is beta is 200 so make it two times larger you see it goes to 5.0245 so i will increase my load current and if i go even higher to beta is 500 so really drastically changing i go to 5.039373 milliamps so that means indeed the beta has some effect it will increase when the beta is increasing or decrease when the beta is decreasing but that change is very small compared to the change actually in the current. So if I change, for example, the beta from 100 to 500, which is five times increase, I go from five milliamps to 5.04, let's say, milliamps. And just, just 40 milliamps change, 40 microamps change, I must say, and that's not that much. Now, this shows again that the variations in the gain, current gain, and also the load voltage here has very small effect in this circuit in the circuit and it shows actually that it's a quite stable circuit and it picks up the variations in the circuit nicely in this case and also handy for our amplification because the amplification again is really related to that ic2 which is our load current all right guys this is our example number one about the current mirror using the bgt and this is a very simple example we will discuss in more detail other examples in the future videos so stay tuned and if you have any questions about this example please let me know in the comment section i will try to answer them as soon as possible don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video take care